Hello, hello, I am Judah Bernard with the Rise Creating Your Voice. I am the wisdom dialoguer and the motivational warrior of the Rise Creating Your Voice. We are here, we are here, and we want to know how are you dealing with, how are you dealing with what happened to you yesterday, past and present? We have a line up for you because I think we what is that? And we are waiting for our co-host to come on and we just going to talk about how you dealing with it. That's everyday life. What's going on? She got her airlines on. <laughs> she got her pom poms on. How are Me. you, LaRonda? I'm doing well. How are you? Right. I, look, what you think? <laughs> So we just, we praise God for just everything today. Go ahead and introduce yourself or we start off because coming in, we want them to come in and get this word, get this word, get this word. How are you dealing with what happened to you yesterday, past and present? You know, I am geared up. I just got through with the other ministry. So, you know, God is all over me right now. And whoo, let's go. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm LaRonda. I am the owner and CEO of Jewels Mentoring LLC. And Jewels is a self-development agency where I life coach and I mentor children. I am a certified life coach and licensed social worker. I have my own podcast as well right now called Love is LaRonda. And it's on YouTube and I, I try my best to upload a new episode on Mondays. And so right now, that's been going pretty consistently, but, you know, things happen, things change. But right now, if you're not, please just check my YouTube um, channel out, Love is LaRonda, where I'm taking myself on a journey to figure out what authentic love is for me. And I am the host to Mr. Judah Bernard on Sunday's Jewels on the Rise. So we welcome each and every one of you. Thank you, LaRonda, for that introduction. And I think what we always talk about is how do we come up with that topic? Sometimes the way it came up was what does your yesterday look like? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what does your yesterday look like? And you know, throughout each day, we go through something. Did we, did we even discuss what went on yesterday? Did we even handle or deal with what went on yesterday? Probably not. Till today. Make that make sense. <laughs> um, and so the thing is, we had so many people to talk about trauma and the things that have been done in the past. Well, we understand that the past was yesterday. And what your present is, what are you dealing with right now? And right. how are you dealing with it? What does that look like? Right. Um, dealing could be so much. And there's so many areas of dealing. Sometimes we don't want to deal with it. We just sweep it under the rug. And they say as much dirt you keep sweeping under the rug, what that rug going to do? It's going to pile up. You're going to have a big hump in it. <laughs> Yes, but they, that's what they say down in Mississippi. Keep sweeping that dirt under the rug. Then you're going to have a big, dirty rug. <laughs> you don't have to get under there one day. Are you, you going to keep climbing up that mountain of dirt? Hmm. So I definitely want us to look at how to cope with a recent trauma or something that you're going through. What does that look like for you? Um, it just depends on the growth of a person, I think. Um, because I, like you said, so many times we are taught not to deal mm. until it becomes so normal that we just push things off until you are so filled with things and eventually you burst some type of weight. And, um, when you're dealing with a recent trauma or things that keep happening, I think that you're just going to have to release it, begin to talk about it some kind of way to just get it out because the more, if you can't keep putting um, 
like you said, dirt on top of dirt because it's going to spill over in something. Um, or it's going to be like um, a, mount, a mudslide or something. It's going to uh, eventually crack open. And so how are you going to let it go? Because every day something is happening. Every day something is brewing. It's, it's something every freaking day. But if you don't learn how to deal with the past, you're gonna the the future is very dark in some type of ways. And mm -hmm. people can just move on, but they still lacking something. It's going to come out some kind of way, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in a job, it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out. <laughs> whether whether it's at the hairdresser, whether you mourn the yard, it's gonna come out. <laughs> It's gonna come well, out. Go to the gym. It's gonna come out. <laughs> and, and usually, it's the smallest things that make it come out. And people look like, "Dang, I just." But it, it was a buildup of so much to where they just couldn't handle it no more. And even though it seemed like a small thing to someone else, it's it's, it's big to you because you have dealt with so much for so long and tried so long to where it just. I just can't take it anymore. And cele Celestial bringing things that I think that's instilled in us as children. Parents train mm -hmm. us to not, how not to embrace our issues. Yeah. That's so true. That is true. That is true. But let me ask you something, and this is for everybody. Once you train to do that and you see the effects of you're holding it in, what usually happens? You know, they don't even see the effects of holding it in because it's so normal. That part. And so unless somebody brings it to their attention, they think they're just, they're just the way they are. And they think this is just the way it has to be. Unless something inside of them is letting them know this is just not right. But most of the time, as for like for me, I never knew it was an issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I never knew that my um, passive aggressive, passive aggressive ways was an issue. I just thought it was my way of dealing with stuff, but I didn't know or see how it affected someone else. But it was my normal when um I felt betrayed, belittled, um, rejected. There was just my coping mechanism was to be very passive aggressive. I wouldn't I wouldn't um mistreat anybody per se. Right. But my ways showed differently. Well here's you know, Huh. You probably said you didn't mistreat anybody, but what did you do to yourself? It it kept me broken because I didn't express my feelings. I didn't express how things bothered me. I just cut people off and <laughs> I just went on with my life. But in the back of my mind, you know, I still harbored that pain and resentment towards people. And even to this day, I still have to be cautious when I feel a little rejected, mm -hmm. not to be passive aggressive because I, I'm quick to do that because it's my normal. Um, I can see you and I, you know, and it's nothing for me. I would, I wouldn't speak. Um, it's, it's very hard for me to, to, to manage that. And the one thing is because sometimes we don't deal with yesterday, I want to give you at least eight things that you can do to right now. And that's why I ask people, go ahead and grab your pen and paper. Grab it. So you will know how to catch <clears throat> it, check it, and change it. The first thing is rest. Because our mind be going so fast, we need to power up. And you might not be sleeping soundly. And yeah. any other responsibilities after that has happened. And don't take on more than the bare minimum because some of us just want to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And sometimes if you're married, you got to be honest and be vulnerable and say, ask your spouse for help. Look, I, I just had this issue. I just need 30 minutes to an hour to go and just soak in the bathroom, in the tub. Mm -hmm. But for women, a lot of times, that's, that's 
this hard because it's um we're so used to having to do everything for everybody and we think that if we do that then we're letting lo loved ones down and we don't want to do that so that's what we talk of vulnerability so the point is now we have to release ourselves to know that every human being need rest mm -hmm. everybody number two Focus on the basics. Everything's going to be affected, specifically your appetite. You ain't going to want to get up and eat all the time. You don't want to get up and do this. But do the best you can to at least eat at least three meals a day, as you have been doing, whether you were eating two or whatever, because now this has become a nutrition thing. And if you're not getting the proper nutrients, how can you change? Right. That's true. I can't tell people. Exercise. You got to release those endorphins. You can come in. You got to release them. Because that make you better and more relaxed. If you have a regular exercise routine, just jump back into it. I ain't saying jump back into it and you go hard, just jump back into it because the more endorphins you release, guess what happens? You mm -hmm. become But if you're in a usual workout, don't be afraid to push forward to something else. If you know you do eight, mile, eight minutes on the Peloton, go to 8.50. <laughs> yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. Make it happen. And if you're the one that not, don't like to do much exercise, the best option is you for just go for a walk outside and notice the mm -hmm. trees waving. Notice the wind blowing on your face. Notice everything. Be mindful when you go outside. Turn on, turn on this and turn off this and enjoy this. Right. What you see. One mm -hmm. thing is, number four is get back on the horse. We already know you fell off the horse when that, that trauma has happened because everything that went left real quick. But this is the time for you to check it, catch it changing where you can see on that horse, how can I avoid this next time? It's important right. that you gradually begin facing your fears and getting back into your usual routine. You gradually. It's a process. But in that process, how are you catching, checking, and changing? Take it slow. Take it and be gentle with yourself. Start by sitting in your car without going anywhere. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. Do that a few times a day and make it manageable. Just sit in your car and don't go nowhere. I do that a lot. Then take a little circle around the block until it's feeling comfortable. Then go to a nearby store and so on. So the thing is, what I tell a lot of clients is, you got to make things manageable for you. Most of us just want to get out there and then we go to Miami. And guess what? Miami starts with drinking, clubbing, drugs, and some other things. And then guess what happens? Mm -hmm. You come to reality <laughs> depressed again. Make it make sense. Yeah. yeah. This true. And I'm not saying not to have fun. Try to have some fun. That's number five. Sometimes you just forget you normally do something. Whether it's just watching TV. I tell you, my greatest try to have some fun, and I know I've repeated this several times to people, was um, when it rains, I like to put on my um, rain boots. And go outside and splash in the rain. That's the child. That's my excitement. <laughs> but guess what? Whatever your excitement is, find it. Somewhere in that little child, whether it's playing with Play-Doh, whether it's splashing your, your, your fingers in the water in your sink, whether it's throwing salt somewhere, whatever it is, 
Make it fun for you. Try to have some fun. Know that in your depressive stage or whatever you're going through, make it an activity that you enjoy. One thing right. that I love that I like is um, like a motorbike or, or, or like a dune buggy. But I get on them so often, I just, <laughs> and, and, and it just shake away everything. <laughs> it's fun to me. Because basically, that's my something I do. Sometimes I go to the gun range. Pow, pow. Mm -hmm. Put off a couple rounds. Now, I'm not telling you shoot your gun at your house. Go to an official professional gun range and shoot your gun. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So the bullets won't go straight. So don't say Judah told you to go, <laughs> go shoot your gun outside. <laughs> so do something you normally feel is fun. Some people like to go swimming. Some like people like to go play tennis. Guess what? Whatever it is, make sure that your endorphins are activated. What does that look like? And I know um, Celestial's blings and things that I want to shut down Mona became very non-trusting. We do that. Yeah, we do that. But guess what happens? What does that do for you specifically? What does that do for you specifically? One thing is you'll find out that if you journal sometime, and one great way to work through your feelings is to buy a journal and spend at least 15 minutes a day writing about what happened. You might want to write about the whole event itself. And go through the details of it. So when you read it again, you have direct knowledge. But sometimes, guess what we want to keep it at, Lorana? Mm -hmm. And how many traumas can you hold up here? <laughs> a lot. And then you wonder why things ain't going right. It's a whole chemical imbalance in there. It's like you pour the bleach in, you pour the uh, Lysol in, you pour the, this in, you pour this in, you pour this in. And guess what? You're about to explode. All those chemicals you have placed inside of your head to keep since you was one years old. And now you're like 48, 50, 50. Mm -hmm. That's true. And these melt up every day, sometimes every hour, sometimes every minute, sometimes every second. Get them out, put them in a journal. Write about whatever your experience is, whether it's frustrating, worry, sadness, or anger. And don't censor it. Cuss in your journal. Make it make sense. <laughs> Honey. Tell them, yes. look, tell them what you want to tell them in your journal. <laughs> Guess what? That is the active part of releasing what you got bottled in. Yeah, you have to release the it. part. Number seven, connect with your loved ones. Now, let me, let, me, let me make this clear. Everybody you connect with, you, mm, mm, mm. make sure that they love you. Let's say that. <laughs> because sometimes we tell people that are gossipers and some other things are problems, and they go tell the whole world. True. Connect with someone you can trust, whether it's a life coach, Someone you can trust. Go see a therapist. Connect with someone. One thing is for sure, if you have a supportive network of people around you, you are more likely to thrive off the, after an event. Yes, true. Great spend time with loved ones. And let me be honest with you, every loved one you don't need time with. I, I, I said it. <laughs> it's uh, true. Know which ones to pick. Because <laughs> everybody ain't... It, Everybody that say they love you ain't got your best interest. Let's say that. Yeah. You might have a strong desire to talk about the traumatic event. And that's why I want people to understand that sometimes we go to the people that tell our business. And then your business is out. Then you lose trust for everything. Now you're back at square zero. And we want to understand. Sometimes you got to understand and those loved ones, can they Handle the details of what you're going to tell them. Right. How they likely going to act to y'all discussion. And do you trust the person to keep this private? So the thing is, it has to be the right person, the right place, and the right time. Right. 
Sometimes the timing is off, and you're just trying to get it out. If the timing is off, put it in your journal. Sometimes That's good. you to guide the person through what you need, letting them know you just want a supporter's ear. Let me repeat that. Sometimes it's okay for you to guide the person, letting them know what you need, which is just a supportive ear. That's it. Okay. When it's talking about trauma, the most person that can give you a great supportive ear is a licensed mental health professional. A True. Friend, a psychologist or whatever. Number, last one is number eight. Recognize when you need professional help. Yeah. Because sometimes we get so overwhelmed and we still want to go to work. We still want to handle what we do. Uh, one reaction can be to fall into some unhealthy coping mm -hmm. strategy, like drinking, drug use, bringing on food or over-medicating or with sedatives, anything that's going to cause harm to your body. But if you notice that you've been behaving like this, more than likely you need professional help. Yeah. It's gone out of our hands. It's gone out the coach's hands. <laughs> Coach got to reference you to another place. So it's important to seek out your family doctor and or, or a mental health, licensed mental health professional to help you cope. Uh, and if you experience suicidal thoughts, we just came out of Suicide Prevention Month. And if you um, have fear of harming yourself or feeling unable to function, you need to reach a medical professional immediately. And dial 911. Or is it 811? I'm sorry. 811. You can text by phone. 811, and that's the suicide prevention hotline. Um, the, the, the whole thing is, because I want people to get this, is number one is rest. Number two, focus on the basics. Number three is exercise. Number four is get back on the horse. Number five, <laughs> try to have some fun. Number six is journal. Number seven is connect with your loved ones. Number eight is recognize when you need professional help. Let me be honest with you. Of course, if I had it my way, I'd probably coach LaRonda too. We prefer you not have a traumatic event. That's true. But we, know, <laughs> we know that they have. But if you do, I pray that this list of coping strategies help someone here to feel more able to recover and manage what they feel like and be more like themselves. Right. And if you feel like you benefit from seeing a therapist or a coach or somebody, um, just go to the hotline because it's available. Okay. So right. if we, you know, if you need help, if you want some coaching, definitely DM um, LaRonda, DM myself. Because I think what we need to understand is sometimes we need we need help with just answering the questions, why? And what's my yeah. life? And it might not be a mental health thing. It might not be a trauma. It might be you trying to get to the next step in your career. Yeah. It, you're trying to move. It might be something that is a life event. So understand there's consulting, there's coaching, there's mentoring, there's, there's so many things that you can do. But the one thing is, first of all, you got to trust yourself. And what does that look like? I know I have gave y'all a plethora of information, but I have to get that out before we get started here because basically <laughs> we've been dealing with something and how do you deal with yesterday's situations? How do you do it? Make sure you join in if you want to come up on the stage and let's talk about it. Come on. LaRonda, what's your take on this? I know I just spread it out because I had so much in my I think I had to just regurgitate, like, boom, go. <laughs> um, For me, how I deal with everyday things is I'm learning to be intentional about everything that I do. Um, I don't allow myself to hold things in any longer than it needs to be held in. Um, when it happens, I, I have to sit with my – and when it happens, you know, it's going to catch you in your flesh first. Mm -hmm. But then I know for me, I have to take a, a break and get away from everything, um, whether that's just sitting in my recliner, 
listening to um, meditation music or is coming home and just sitting with the shower water running while I'm sitting in there, I have to I have to process it in my mind to see, okay, God, what 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 is this for? Why am why is this happening? What am I what do I need to learn from it? I start to ask myself a lot of questions. Um I went through therapy and um in therapy I learned how to do breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. I learned how to um dissect my emotions of things. Um, she gave me a list of questions to ask myself about the emotion. What is the emotion? What does the emotion come from? You know, so I have to um, go through all that. Then once I go through all that, then I understand the reason behind it. And usually the reason behind it I always reflect back to me, something that has been an issue for me. And so then I have to learn how to overcome and deal with the root of the issue because I, I'm in a place now where I understand no one can do anything to you unless you allow them to do it. Mm -hmm. And when you get upset about something, then it is something in you that what they did or said triggered. Mm -hmm. And so you have to know your triggers and you have to know what, what triggers do for you. And so I've learned my triggers. And so when those triggers come, I know exactly now where they're coming from. And so, but there's also, again, with me taking time with myself to get to know myself, to understand, because a lot of people don't know their triggers. Mm -hmm. um, people can say and do things to them, and they just think it's the person, but it's not the person. It's because they did or said something, they hit something that was already inside of you. And so, because it hit something inside of you, um, you become defensive with it, and you get angry. Anger is a defense. And so, you have to learn um what what's causing it mm -hmm. and so once you learn what's causing things and the emotion of sadness the emotion of bitterness the emotions of frustration someone irritating you someone agitating you all those things are going to lead back to a root inside of you and so once you understand those things then you'll be able to pretty much navigate your day um and not allow things to bother you as much not saying that things won't ever bother you but it won't be so much to where you can't maintain a focus um, on your day because you would deal with it and you will move on. So that's where I am with it. Um, and I noticed also about me, Judah, is I am starting to be more keen to same conversations because I'm in a different state of mind now. Ain't that... Ain't they good? And my, and my, yeah. Yes. And so my conversations are different. Right. And so now when people are calling me, talking about the same thing, I'm learning that it's, that it's beginning to annoy me. Wow. So that makes wow. Me, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like this journey that I'm on with finding our thing to love is changing so much in me. And I'm realizing that when you are really walking authentically and what God wants you then there are just certain conversations that you don't even feel comfortable being in anymore yeah. and I'm also learning that every day you are growing and learning something. something and so you can't be in the same boat week after week after week and you can't keep making the same excuses week after week after week right. and so have to come to a conclusion. I'm not doing it because I don't want to. That's it. Just because you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Because guess what? I'm owning my peace and I want to keep my peace right here. Let's bring somebody back right. right quick. Come on in if you want to. Come on in if you want to. Get on the hot seat. <laughs> on the hot seat right now. Boop. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. just blinging things. Thank you. I really enjoy y'all. I hope she didn't hang up. I hope she come on the stage and let's talk. I just accept it. If you want to come in, um, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in. I press accept. You will have people that want to come in. Let us know, let us know. He must not be on anymore. 
I don't know how to take it off. Hey, how you doing, Amir? How you doing? So what we're talking about is how are you dealing? How are you dealing? Let's say that slowly. How are you dealing? How are you dealing? Okay, is he unable to join? Okay, great. How are you dealing with what happened to you yesterday? We are explaining some of those things that we see that people don't know how to deal. If you go back, we gave the eight steps. And for those who just joined, the eight steps were rest, focus on the basics, exercise, get back on the horse, try to have some fun, journal, connect with your loved ones, recognize when you need professional help. And we do understand that everybody goes through something daily. Oh my gosh, if I had a quarter for everything that I go through on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah, yeah, probably a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> if it's just a quarter in my life for everything I've gone through. I'd be a billionaire. I'd probably just take it down to five minutes and still be a billionaire. <laughs> You know, it's, it's something, but it's, sometimes, you know, I don't get to the place where I just play it off a lot of time. It ain't even worth even um, focusing on because I'm, I'm just at a place where I don't want nothing anymore to take away from my peace. Right. And so when there's little, little things that you can just ignore, I understand some things you can ignore because you have to choose your battle. And people going people, people to be people. People gonna do people things. Yeah. But you can't hold who they are to you, if that makes sense. Like All right, you have to get to a place where you say this is just who they are. Um, no matter how much you wanna change it until they're ready to change it, you can't change it and you just have to let it be. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? What does that look like? And I think what we need to do is understand what catch it, check it, change it means. When you're actually going through an emotional situation, that's when you catch it. That's being mindful. Next thing is you check it. Is this thought pattern negative? Is this thought pattern, am I overthinking this thought pattern? Now you got to take everything else you're thinking about so you can think on that particular thing. <laughs> yeah. That's when you check it and start realizing, is this really what I'm thinking or is it something else? Then you change it. What I say change it mean, it's not mean that you change it where you're 100%. But if right. I give my measurements, say for instance, if I was at 35%, I know I like manageable chunks. I know by a certain time I want to be up to 45%, but what am I working to to get to 45%? Am I still lying in the bed, cut up with my <laughs> Okay. Oh, get a drink of water and cook something. And that's your percentage. Whatever it is, if you just walk to the shower, get in the shower and just let the hot water run on you, whatever you want to give authority to that percentage, that's yours. If that's your 100%, put it up to 100 Mm -hmm. okay, you feel good, but I know I like things manageable. And those things that are manageable to me mean that I can attain. Like, mine is real low, 45%. If I'm at 35, let me go to 45 because I don't know if I can reach 100. And since some of the times we sell it for less and want to say, oh, I need to get to 100, and then your body becomes shell shock. Yeah. Then you got 17 other things on you. Let me tell you something. When you're at that race where you're saying, I'm at 35% and I'm going to get to 100, your body becomes shell shock. Guess what usually happens? There's accidents. You hit your toe on the, on, the, on, the, um, on the bed. You go and fall somewhere. Because guess what? You did not take the time to become mindful. You run into a door. You do something where you are thrown off balance. Yes, you have to remain mindful at all times. What's your mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be that. That's true. <laughs> and sometimes people people who deals with anxiety and all this stuff like that, their mind can't even 
begin the <laughs> process host. <laughs> they just everywhere. They everywhere. I'm going to tell you one thing that I do, and I do it so well. When I'm at a place where I can just scream, I'll do just that. Just go outside and scream. Got to read something. That's a form of exercise. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm another person like trampolines. I will jump on. Really? Them. Yes. I will go to the, what they call that, jump zone. Oh, oh wow. what? Huh? The jump. I said, oh, what? Yeah. Oh. So, sometimes, you, for me, personally, just go back to that kid-like state. Mm -hmm. Without a care in the world. That makes sense. Sometimes we so much adults that I'm an adult, you know, and I got this, my responsibility, and I need to go get this done, and I need to go get this. Bitch, for a minute, just for a minute. <laughs> you know what I've, I've realized, Judah, too, is that when God blesses you with your significant other, he will be able to bring that, that child side out of you or her or whatever. I think that there will be such a freeing place mm -hmm. for you, um, especially if you find safety in the person. Right. That, that childlike behavior. You know, you won't be acting like a child. I'm not saying that right. you can't act like a child, but, but that childlike behavior where you just have fun with them, I think that, that there's going to be an uh, indicator that you found someone that's for you. Um, it's because you're going to be so free with that person. And the one thing, and I have to tell people right off the bat, me and my fiance have been together 24 years. We've been knowing each other for 24 years. So I'm just saying, so people won't get it misconstrued that we've known each other for 24 years. <laughs> That's a long time. Yes, we already have that childlike behavior. I'm going to give you an example. We went to a fair um, in Mississippi. And... Um, what happened? We was going through the gates and a, one of the gate attendants had said something. And we looked at each other like we usually do. And we just bust out laughing because that's how we do. We, like, we stupid together. That's good. <laughs> and that's, that's, the fun I want to have. that's the fun and the freedom that God give us. And But the thing is, we had that separately. And when we come together, if you already have that, guess what happens? It become double power. But the thing is, so many people come in with negative behaviors. They have not worked on themselves. Right. And yeah. they expect your partner or your spouse, your loved one, to come and help you fix yourself. No. Yeah. Start working on you now if you are looking for a particular person. Yeah, because you're going to have to learn how to deal with your everyday woes. You can't put all that on your mate all the time. And if you're moody, don't marry nobody. <laughs> Fix yourself first. I, I, I'm moody, but I'm not, I, I'm moody to like, women are, women are going to be naturally moody. So I, I, I don't agree with that. We okay, are naturally question. moody. Huh? My question. Go ahead, go ahead and finish, but just know women I women hormones um is something that we can't really I don't know we we can control it, but our hormones is like especially around our time of the month, mm -hmm. we gonna fluctuate in our mood. But she's They're just about it. period for those who don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, so women to a certain extent is just gonna be naturally moody. Because of our hormones and emotions, which men now men ain't typically moody, but if you if you're dealing with a moody man, then yeah, some men ain't really moody, but women are typically moody individuals, and I think that you're gonna have to have someone that kind of knows you to know how to deal with those moods. But I also believe now that I've grown in these areas, you need to tell your mate 
when you're going to have these movies. So put it on the can, calendar. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have to let your your significant other know. Okay, around my because for me, I know beforehand I get like really, really down, like mm -hmm. depressed. I just I'm really needy and really want to be under you. So I know when I get involved with someone to let them know, you know, a week or so before hat, my period comes on, then this is how I'm going to act. So it's not going to be like, this girl is crazy, you know? <laughs> and I know uh, after it, I'm, re I'm really easily agitated, like really, really frustrated. Like, I don't want to be around nobody. I don't want nobody talking to me. I don't want, it just, I'm just, in, in, in any minute I can just go off afterwards so you have to be able to know these moves so you can let your significant other know so he don't think something's wrong with you <laughs> so that's what i'm saying so you have to know yourself because the moves of a woman is going to happen okay but they're just going to happen what i like <laughs> i like what you said is how can you describe that or put him involved with that because some of yeah. them the mood and you just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, we don't handle that because it's not our move. <laughs> so you have to <laughs> tell them, okay. So when I'm feeling like this, I need you to to just hold me. I but need to be under you. Now we yeah. have a question, and go ahead because I got another question with that. So, so I'm saying, so when it happens, and anyway, yeah. So my thing is, I just need you there. I just want to be under you. You don't have to be around me all day. But put, put in your mind, okay, this, this is how she's feeling. So when I get home, I just need to hug her. Or I just need to lay on the couch with her. Or I need to lay in the, just lay there. But then afterwards, just give me my space. So here's it's my crazy. Here, here's my question. Here's my question. And it's a big doozy now. <laughs> what if your man's love language is not that? Then if he loves me, then he's going to be willing to give me the love that I need. I didn't say that. I said what is his love language. If his love language is not that, how and I'm, you compromise? I will be willing to compromise, but in also in that compromising, if so I'm willing to be aware of his love language. Yes, I'm going to be aware of your love language before we get involved. I'm, I'm going to need to know how to cater to you. I'm asking for the thing of but the thing of love languages is love is a selfless sacrifice. So that means even though I'm not, I'm not typically this type of way, but because you need it, then I'm going to be willing to sacrifice my want to give you what you need. Now, I'm not going to expect him to be perfect with it. And I know in the beginning, I'm just going to have to say, can you, can you give me a hug? Mm. Can can you lay with me? Because when you ask your significant other, if they really care about you, when you ask, and they, not to matter 10, they're going to do it unless they're just super busy and they just can't do it. And if they ain't busy and they still don't do it, you may ought to reconsider because they don't understand your needs. But me as a wife or a significant other, then I'm going to be, because typically me, I'm not really... um. Feel, feelly touchy. I don't, I don't, I'm not really, you know, I ain't with all day. And so, um, and I know for me, I, my, my giving is how I show love and stuff like that. So I'm going to have to be willing to sacrifice some things in order to give my significant other what he needs. But see, all these going to be conversations before we even get to engagement and marriage and if this can't be handled in this dating phase then i know it's not going to be handled in the marriage because right. you well what what you accept before the marriage is what you're going to get in the marriage and it probably you don't go so all these things are going to have to be set up set in the beginning um because you need to know because i think that's a lot of time what happened is in the dating part People are not honest about who they are and what they need and what they want. And then they just expect someone just to automatically do it when they get in a relationship. And, and you people can't handle all that at all times. So you, like you said, we have to know these things day by day. Well, how are we doing <clears throat> things day by day? All these issues we bear day by day. We got to really learn how to understand this before we even enter into a romantic relationship with someone else. 
All right, we got somebody up. How are you? What's your name and where you from? Hello? All right, don't want to say anything. Hey, come on, come on and um, be able to talk when you get on, okay? <laughs> Don't be trying to fix your camera and stuff now. Let's get on and talk. This is real talk, so let's talk for real, okay? If you want to come back on, definitely press. We got about 13 more minutes before we end this live. Let's definitely come on and give the information that we need to hear. How are you dealing with what happened to you yesterday? Right. In God's time, Raphael, come on. Let's hear you. Let's hear you. What's going on? What's going on? How you doing? How are you dealing with yesterday's? How are you dealing with it? How are you dealing with it? I call them out, they leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, what we need to understand is take some time for yourself. What does that look like? Some Ooh. need to write in a journal. Because a lot of us have a lot of bad things about us that we don't want to discuss, but discuss right here. Yeah. One thing that I do is, what's my old, old journal? Oh, yeah. This is probably my oldest journal I got. Oh, wow. You wore this or that? Oh, you wore you that <laughs> for my <ceiling. laughs> But I love it because it's still left, you know, but guess what? It, it loses its savor and stuff. But this is my go-to journal. See, I got a lot of stuff in here. And Do you ever go back and read it? Oh, of course, of grow? course. Let me show you just how old this journal is. When I was leaving, ooh, was it Alabama? North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Charlotte, North Carolina. And these are some of the things that people wrote in my journal. And look what the date is. What did they say? 2007. 2013? Oh. Seven? 2007. Oh, wow. I kept this journal. Um, because they said some amazing things about me, and I just want to read one of them. You know, I'm going to read a lot of amazing things about me. I am sure that wherever you go and whatever you decide to do, you will be do it just fine. Keep your wonderful attitude and sense of humor forever. It is never as serious as it seems. Whatever problem you have, God bless you, and I wish you all of his blessings. Wow. Now, this was me in 2007, and guess what? Still the same way. I'm going to keep my humor. Um, here's another one. It will be quiet around the office without you. <laughs> wow. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. I'm glad I had the opportunity to make your acquaintance for the short time I did. Mm -hmm. So I impact a lot of lives. Um, That's good, Judah. That was 2007. And I had about 15 pages of people just sending me love messages and stuff of um, aspiration and dreams and look where I am now. And this is from 2007, if y'all read it. And guess what? In this book, guess what happened? What happened? This is where I wrote my birthing of the rise creating your voice. In 2007? Yeah. Wow. And I'm just trying to find the page. But that's one thing that you have to understand. He said... Write it down. Make it plain. So make it plain. It's true. They got to read it to run with it. <laughs> that part. But nobody's it saying that. It's true. I got, oh, I, yeah. Let me show you. You know me. I'm a journal. I'm a journal from that. And I think I just put everything on here. I put it down somewhere. I'm sorry I went off the line, but I want to show y'all my oven. I know I have some. Maybe you 
Now, I got to show y'all. And excuse my expression. Here's my other. I got this from one of my uh, supervisors. Here's my other journal full of pages. <laughs> wow. I have stuff in so many notebooks, I don't even keep up with them. Look. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my other. This is on my previous job, and this is something that I came up with. I just got a big binder. <laughs> just saying. Wow. That's crazy. You got to have something because, like, you know, I have a big binder of stuff just wrote everywhere. So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And I go and I write different paper and colored paper out of Walmart and just keep everything in a, mm -hmm. in a binder. So, I understand. <laughs> you have to write it. You have to write it. Oh, yeah. But that was good. Okay. We got some other people in here. Let's, let's see if they're going to talk today. Okay. Marez. We got about seven more minutes. We wanted to bring somebody on. This is why we're here. Salut. Hello. Where are you calling from? Ça va. So who? Oh, I'm from Tunisia. Yeah. <laughs> we love everyone. But one thing is we definitely want to employ that you show your face and also be able to um, translate to English or speak English, okay? Because right. it's an invitation right. that we're trying to make sure that we're listening the English language, okay? No harm feelings about anybody, but the one thing is we want to make sure that we're captivating our whole audience, okay? Right. Any other questions, any other comments before we leave today? I know it is 6.54. What's up? What's up? What's up? Tell us. What's going on? What's your Sunday jewel for the day? Um, my Sunday's jewel for today is God always sends his representative. Mm. So many times we, we're praying and we're praying and we're praying. And we want to pretend like Christ is not here in the press because we expect just this spiritual thing to just come and just rev it all away. But we have to understand that he sends his he sends his representative to answer your prayers, but you have to be wise and open enough to receive it when he sends it. Because a lot of times it don't come in the way you want it to come, but it comes but because you are not open to receive things in a spiritual way, you reject the very thing that came to bless you. So stop looking for all this magical spiritual things to happen. Now, I'm not saying that those type of things can't happen, but God usually use people to do what he needs them to do. So Come God on. says it's good. Come on, prophetess. <laughs> So just be keen and open to possibilities. Mm -hmm. And even if it doesn't come the way you want it to, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? What can I benefit from this? Because everything that comes to you is not of the devil. Some things are God um, allowing to get you to the place where he needs you to be in answering your prayer. So just be open to the possibilities. Uh, my jewel before we leave here is know yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't keep reiterating to thine own self be true. We lie so much to our own selves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why you behind? Did your eyes bulge? Mm -hmm. We fell up ourselves for failure because we lie to our own selves. Yes. We do a lot of lying. Mm -hmm. And I say that for me too. I, I'm, I'm not the other person, you know. I'm, I'm not sure of that stick too. 
But right. Said, how can you get to know yourself? And I was one of those persons. I kept lying to myself. I guess as I lie, you know, different things start happening. <laughs> and yeah. you lie to yourself. Guess what that means? You're a lot of us. You're like somebody else. Make that make sense. Yeah, that's true. But until I found that I have to be mindful of what I do to myself and know that to thine own self be true, as William Shakespeare said. We can accomplish so much if you just be true to yourself. But some of us living on this Instagram and these social medias with fake lives. It's true. Fake everything. As in the COVID-19, we have masks on, but some of y'all been wearing masks for a long time. Very. And I'm not calling nobody out in particular, but if the shoe fit, shall you wear it? Comfortably. And if it betwixt you to do that, you would always put on some slippers. <laughs> and don't fall. So, in it, be true to yourself. Start off being true to yourself so you can be true to others. Okay, is that put? That makes sense to me. Is that put in there? No, she downstairs. Oh, he's just making sure she ain't coming upstairs. <laughs> That's the love. I'm of my surprised life. she ain't came up the stairs. She forgot that I, we supposed to be on. <laughs> Honey, I didn't have her all weekend. I needed a break. Oh no, don't oh. do that to my pussy. Send it, send it. Uh, cardboard box and put some holes in it. <laughs> Honey, you will send her back. I won't. She was. She was on the stage. She'll sign her ticket. Maybe yeah, you got to have some food to feed Pud, baby, because the food I'm thinking she won't eat, she be turned it off. That poor. <laughs> so as we really hear, any announcements? Um, Jules, oh uh, not Jules. Love is a run. We'll have a new episode up tomorrow on my YouTube channel. And this week, um, the lesson that I'm going to be speaking on is love is where <laughs> warfare. Oh, oh. Um, go ahead. Yeah, warfare, oh. and um, just teaching you know what parts of love to fight for, or not fight for, mm -hmm. because I know for me, giving up is so common, and not just, but. All these things are tying back to me. But I know for me, um, I give up on myself easily. Mm -hmm. I, I stop fighting for myself easily. And I'm learning that love is is, is warfare. And you're going to have to, and I'm going to have to learn how to fight um, the obstacles. Because like when the obstacles get a little bit too much for me, sometimes I just want to give up. But so I'm having to learn to go against my thoughts and keep fighting because even with this journey right here and recording now i was excited but i know it's work because now i'm having to push myself to do it because i don't want to do it no more that's crazy i know but i'm gonna keep doing it uh, let me tell you what you're doing <laughs> let me be honest and the reason why we have this critter brain because we don't want to do it. Now you're realizing that number one is what have I been taught? And your critical brain is saying, is this really truly me now? Oh, to be to be too much. It's 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 a bit challenging because um it's literally changing everything about me. And so I'm so comfortable with being me. Um, yeah. And change is, 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 a, is a struggle, right? And when I'm in this love journey that people often talk about, you know, I'm beginning to wonder, you know, a lot of these things that people consider as love from what I'm seeing, that's not it. Right. It's, it's, it's not it. Wow. So we'll see. Guess what? I'm, I'm gonna keep fighting. Let me tell you. Uh, let me make sure I Google this right. I want you to listen to "Worth Fighting For" tonight. You know that song? Mm mm. 
by Brian Courtney. I, I guess I do know that song. I want you to really listen to the lyrics. Okay. You're going to be crying. Let me be honest with you. <laughs> I got you. Uh, because that's one thing that helped me out. How about we be worth fighting for? Yeah. That's it. That's it. I can see that. I can see that. That's it. <laughs> worth fighting for by Brian. Uh, you know, I don't know why I want to say Byron Cage, but it's Byron, Brian Courtney Wilson. Um, my announcement is uh, Tuesday is Pod Being Live. Um, we just hit. 20, 20 hours of live live streaming. Um, hmm. Live streaming. So congratulations to all my supporters and all. <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And actually, I just um, was texting my um, publisher. My book will be out this week. That's amazing. Congratulations, yeah, Judy. My book will be out this week and I'm thankful to all the people that were interviewed. I'm thankful to the supporters that's already wanting support. I got over 150 pre-orders, so I'm just grateful. Oh. I, um, for what do you order the book from? Well, uh, we're doing Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. Okay. So we're doing both of them. So um, it has not hit just yet, but it will be out this week. Um, be looking at my timeline and also in 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 the chat or whatever whatever. On all my social media platforms because it will be. I have a couple of uh, podcasts that I will be on once it drops and things like that too as well. So make sure that you join into those lives too as well. Maybe I can be on Love on LaRonda. <laughs> Love is LaRonda. Now, I'm trying to set up something because you know I'm I'm recording from home, and the other things I did I had a girl doing it for me, and so now you know I'm not tech savvy at all. <laughs> Like I can't, um, I can't edit a video or nothing. And so, I'm, I need to learn how to do these things for myself. Yes. And it's just taking me some time, um, because I was paying money to get it done, but now it's like in my spirit, like Ronnie, you need to learn how to do this for yourself because you can't keep depending on people to make things happen for you. And so, um. I, I was an advocate of let those who's gifted in it do it, but when you don't have the money to pay them like that, so you have to figure out how to do it for yourself. Right. So I'm called Stephanie want to be on one. I had another somebody else want to be on one, but I know this season is just going to be me. Yeah. But then my next season, I'm going to start inviting people on because I need to go through this journey right here alone. I, I totally agree because Trust me, my first one, season one, was about me. Yeah. About my transformation becoming me. Because yeah. if I can't show you how I became me, how can I tell mm -hmm. you how to be a better you? Right. I can't. So. And a lot of people are out here teaching people, and they're still on the journey themselves. Ooh. You know, um... I think for me, I'm just in a state where I want my character to really represent Christ. Right. That's it. And um, mm -hmm. I want when people leave my presence that they leave with something. Right. Um, and I want to be able to display this level of love to everyone. Even if they don't give it to me, I still want this to, I want this love thing to be Rhonda. That's you know what I'm saying? Cool. Like, I just want it to be the core of who I am, which we are already made in his image, but he has to build character in us. Mm -hmm. And love is a fruit of the spirit. And so I really want this fruit to blossom in my life. Because you say we are known by the fruit we bear, yeah. you know, the fruit. We... So I really want that to be me. And so in order for that to be me, I have to understand what it is. Mm -hmm. So we get a short definition of what love is in the Bible, but we still have to go through a journey to figure out what, what does that mean for me? Mm -hmm. And so that's the season of my life that I'm in now is learning. What, what, what does that mean for me? How can I 
be that to other people and understand that it is nothing about me. It's all about what Christ has put in me to be of my character. Which only what you do for Christ will last. Will last. Like, yeah, I, I really in in a play. I want to please God. I don't, it's not about me and to me. It's about doing the work and feel, fulfilling the purpose that He's given me to please Him. All right, and no, it's my and it's like seven minutes behind the hour, but we thank yeah. you for joining. Also, look down there. That is Lorando at Jewels Mentoring LLC. Make sure you <laughs> like and subscribe to her channel, and don't forget she has Love Is Lorando on Mondays. That's her YouTube channel. Say Love L O V E is what Lorando said with me. So go ahead and t tune into her every Monday. My stuff drops every Sunday. You can go back and review most of the podcasts and the lives and the things that we're on. It's also on my Instagram page. And also, I don't know if LaRonda put it on hers, but guess what? It's somewhere where we can see it. So I if, think it does be on mine, too. And anytime that you go to www.therise.live and you see that photo of LaRonda, that is every time that I'm on live with her. So I give homage to the other co-hosts. Let her picture be on there. So anytime you see LaRonda, guess what that means? She's on there. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank you for your time. We appreciate your support. Um, we only get better. The more support we have, is that's what makes us better. Okay? Right. So definitely, we're not saying goodbye. We're just saying good night, and we'll see you later. So tell a friend. Tell a phone tell your spouse. Heck, tell everyone. And we'll see you on the next podcast. All right? <laughs> Good night. Uh -huh.